Hello everyone and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit here at the Moscone Center in San Francisco, California. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, and I'm sitting alongside my co-host and co-analyst, co-founder of theCUBE, Dave Vellante. Hello, how are you? Good, good, yeah. good. Dig deep, deep into data. So, and the, you know, there's so much talk about data, which obviously here we are at the Data Cloud Summit, but it, it's useless unless it is accurate. Absolutely, and so, you know, putting it in one place helps, but that, it, it, that's necessary but insufficient, right? And we're going to get into it. Indeed we will. So I would like to welcome our next guest to the show. We have Rohit Chowdhury, the founder and CEO of Excel Data. Thank you so much hey. for coming on the show. And Praveen Darbare, the Director of Data Platforms and Operations at Workday. Thank you both so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Rohit, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about Excel Data? Well, so Accelerator is the leading enterprise data observability company. You know, we work with some of the largest companies in the US and across the world. And who do we work with? We work with every single person who has a ton to do with large volumes of data and is finding it very difficult to manage it, to operationalize it, and to deliver business value. And that pretty much includes the whole world, but you know, some of the enterprises are way more complex and voluminous than the others, so that's who we work with. Uh, data observability is a new concept. Uh, you know, it started emerging towards the end of 2018, 2019, when people figured out that there's going to be different data islands and the transfer of data is going to cause a lot of problems and create havoc for the enterprise because of just the topic that you were talking about. You know, high quality of data is a challenge. Doing it at a reasonable cost is a challenge and we'll talk more about that. Yeah, and data observability is, is a new concept. You know, observability is a new, new word, <laughs> but it really is the extension of application performance management, whereas data observability is actually something new and different. Is that, is that fair? 100%. So, you know, I had the opportunity of being an application engineer for many years before I became a data engineer, and the way I look at it is that when I was an application engineer, I had the right tool sets in my sort of, you know, back pocket to go and figure out what was going wrong with the application performance, user experience, cost, stability, any of that. But when I became a data engineer, what I found out was that not only was the stack very new, but there were just no tools to manage your data very accurately. And guess what, the proliferation of technologies just made it so worse that in 2017 I had an epiphany and I said, okay, this is a company to be started and we're going to go on, on the track that you know, erstwhile Datadog, App Dynamics, New Relic have charted. They are very focused on applications but guess what, everybody's now focused on data, and therefore you need the best of tools for managing the data landscape. So Praveen, what's your relationship with data? <laughs> it's a deep one. <laughs> it is a deep one, yes. And all along, whole my career, I'm working only in data, and data is in my DNA, that's all. So I will say that I started with my career with uh, data. I work in different industries and all those. Uh, right now I work for Workday and uh, I manage the data platform uh, within the business technology. And how do you guys work together? Um, again, I think this is uh, something we started building a data platform. Uh, the journey started almost two years back. So when you are building a platform, you need to make sure that you are building it for the next gen. When you say that next gen means what is the outcome prospect, what you are looking for it. You are looking for clean data, you are looking for the reliable data, where you can make the right decisions on the data, number one. Number two, you are reducing your decision latency. Now, time is so important. Making decision at the right time is so important. To decision latency is one of our goal, how we can build it, make sure that the data is clean, also we are making the decision on time. So, help me understand something. So you've got the business logic as an application, you know, SaaS company, you got all the business logic inside a workday. So your job is to harmonize all that data. You, you, I mean, maybe not your job, but you've done the work to harmonize all that data. With, with AI, does that bring in a whole new set of complexities that makes that um, more difficult, more challenging, changes the nature of how we think about data quality and Absolutely. data engineering? I think, you know, a couple of things, you know, you hit upon a really good point that you know, the harmonization of data, a typical enterprise has over a thousand applications in deployment. If you're a Fortune 500 or a Global 2000 company, you're probably dealing with 1500 to 1800 applications which are both external and internal. And that is producing a bunch of information and data which you have to continue to harmonize to get to the right outcomes with your data. Guess what? 
you know, Ramon was on stage presenting, you know, yesterday. I'm not sure if you had the opportunity to not oh, yeah. to to look at that or not. But here's a very simple truth that if you have garbage in, you're going to get garbage out. And the big challenge that now enterprises are figuring out is that if they don't get in control of their data quality and reliability processes, then you know the AI is going to be out of whack because you can't get trustable AI outcomes unless you've gone and figured out what is inside your data stores. So the emphasis on getting a house on order has never been higher. You know, when we started working with Praveen, you know, he hinted upon that, that you know, he was rebuilding parts of the platform. One of the core requirements that he had was that he wanted operational eyes on the entire supply chain of data, because that's how it is. You know, it's the most important supply chain other than the physical goods infrastructure that exists in the world. You know, what's the most important supply chain today? It's data supply chains, and everybody has it, every single enterprise. So Praveen, we know that companies are at varying points in their AI journey, and, and some are much further ahead than others, but is that message getting out that, that Rowie just talked about, this idea that you need to get your house in order before we can even really begin? Because if, if your data's junk, there's not much you can do with it. You're, you certainly can't rely on it to make the business decisions that you want to rely on it to. Yeah, Miss. again, I think if the data is not clean, probably you are not making the right decisions. That's the outcome. Every company would like to have the decision has to be right and on time. So I think adding to this, but observability is a little bit actually the bigger prospect if I look at it, right? It has a component where the data flows from the source to the ultimate actually, the consumption layer. It flows through the funnel. It has to be observed. And there are multiple facets to that, number one. Number two, you have the infrastructure. That also needs to be observe so that you understand also where you are investing into your infrastructure. That needs to, that needs to you need to have the visibility and uh, I think same visibility you have to give to your stakeholders as well so that they understand wh where the ROI is coming, number two. Number three, you need to manage your, the support because operational excellence becomes your nightmare sometimes. And again, I think I'm speaking through the experience. So, this is, this is very important to make sure that you're, you are putting the operational guardrails there and through the observability, I think you can do all of that. Otherwise, it is very difficult to make the eye contact with your stakeholders. Can you describe, Praveen, your, your, you paint a picture of your, your data stack, if you will, from infrastructure on up. What's it, what's it look like? Um, yeah, so we have a new stack which is a snowflake. So again, I think we are different staff for different purposes. So we have for the analytics stacks, Snowflake is our, the choice of tools. Yeah, let's, and we can focus on that just to yeah. narrow the conversation. Right. So I think starting with the data acquisition, we have the flight run and all those we, which uh, for the mostly data acquisition, but it's not the only tool. We have our custom connectors and all those where we acquire the data based on the different frequency. Suppose you need the data in the real time. So you have a different pattern, data pattern. You need data in the micro batches. You need data in the batches. And maybe some of the data you get it once in a day, or maybe through the different file structures and all those semi-structures sometimes, sometimes the structures and all those, all that data. Then I think once you have this data, you, have, you need to process that data. Also you need to put the governance around this data. You need to make sure that you secure each one of those data elements because each those elements has different meanings. Who can see what data? Only the authorized users they need to get the access to those authorized data content. So security is very important based on the roles, what the people should get it, how, what data they should be seeing it. All of it, right? So now we are talking about your governance you are putting here. You are putting your data transformations, tooling and all those. And then I think finally the data is going for the analytics using the enterprise matrix or the data products which is getting consumed. Also along with that you will have the upstream and downstream integrations. You need to make sure that your data is feeding to the upstream, that feedback loop is complete. Also you are doing the downstream and, uh, integrations so that you have other applications are also consuming that data. But this is the overall funnel it looks like and uh, also moving this, uh, again I think, uh, looking at this, uh, the data quality. I want to talk a little bit about that. Quality is very important, and uh, how do we look at the quality? How do we get the help there? Because you can have the thousands of thousands of attributes, 
and who is going to make the decisions on all of those. So I think assist should be there, right? Technology should step in and start helping on those areas as well. So I think a lot of, lot of details needs to come out with the quality, lineage, metadata. Uh, also, we look at actually the operational excellence as well. So all the metadata, the data assets is cataloged. Also along with that, every instance of those assets get executed, create your operational metadata, how that can be used, right? So the KPIs and all those ultimately look for time to value, right? How quickly you can make the value out of it. So all this stack, what we have put together, and that is what something looked like based on different facets within the funnel. So you standardized on Snowflake. Yes. And, and you mentioned the importance of governance. What, I'd like each of you to weigh in. What's your point of view on this whole discussion of, of, of Iceberg Open Tables? Two years ago at Snowflake Summit, Benoit asked, who's ever heard of Iceberg? Like, five <laughs> hands went up, and my, mine was one, and I had started to look into it, but there weren't a lot of people. Now it's, everybody's talking about Iceberg. What's your point of view on Open Table formats? Is it something that, that you're pursuing, and what are you seeing? I think you know, it's really important to abstract this whole iceberg discussion to think about what are really customers asking for. Hmm. They're really asking for interoperability. Interop is a core feature as companies go and decide their technical architecture because it cannot be tied to one vendor, one CSP and one ISP. And you don't want to basically tie yourself down to you know, one stack or one platform. I think that's the key message. How do we as ISVs adopt to that kind of world? You know, we are always compatible with all of these. Whether it's Parquet, ORC, Iceberg, Delta, you name it, we, we, uh, we, we are extremely compatible with all of these. And we recognize the reason that companies and large enterprises are trying to de-risk themselves. They don't want to get to a position where you've tied your business outcomes to an architecture model. What they're trying to figure out is that, you know, what's like the operability model, not from a technical perspective, but from a business perspective that, you know, are we predicting our churn at the right time? Are we forecasting our public market numbers on the, you know, on the at least 1% above what we predicted? Can we come in over there? People are looking at, you know, did we integrate the right sources of data, both external and internal? Because it's not just the applications which produce data, there's so much coming from elsewhere. So all of that has to be taken into consideration, and so Iceberg is a positive step according to me. Right, okay, but. It's so much easier if I just put it all in one place and I use, I, I use managed iceberg tables and I don't have to go out to that, that scary world outside. Um, uh, how do you think about the whole uh, you know, open table format? Do you want to, to, to bring in you know, uh, outside data and, and keep it outside of Snowflake or is your philosophy of just bring it in? How, how do you think about? I will say that I think technology is still evolving and there is a lot of learnings are going to come over a period of time. But again, I think logically if I look at it, right, data being at one place and getting used for different, different purpose. Suppose I need the use for analytics purpose or I need the use for my ML or different kind of workload, that purpose. So I think these are two different workloads and they don't match with each other. It has to be a little bit separate, but the data could be the same. So I think if logically, if I think of it, I think maybe it makes sense, right? Now I think we need to look into like, how the technology is going to evolve, what the vendors, how they are going to react to this, also how this data is going to get shared. Standardization needs to happen. I think it's in, in the interest of some, uh, maybe I will call it actually, in the customer's interest, they might get the, the broader value out of it. Again, technology is going to evolve around those, they are going to adopt some of those areas because we see the value in it. But to your point, Robert, it's my data. I want to bring any compute engine to that data. I mean, Snowflake popularized separating compute from storage, but the next wave seems like it's separating the compute from the data. Any, any data, any engine can access that data, and that's really what we're seeing here, right? But that opens up really big governance challenges, yeah? Absolutely, and, and you know, the scope of governance itself is so large right now. You know, the old model of governance is gone. If you think of, you know, what CDOs were trying for like 10 years or 15 years, they bought a catalog and they would go in sequence. You know, I'm going to catalog my assets and then I'm going to govern them and provide security Very access. Linear. <laughs> and, and just think of where it got you. Yeah. And the reason is that, you know, the whole governance paradigm was so static in nature because it was the way that it was applied for data at consumption. But now it's not just the data for consumption, which is 
to be governed, it's also the data which is coming into the data lake, the data that's getting processed and the data that will eventually be consumed and shared with external third party companies, your partners, whoever they may be, exchange formats. So if you think of the new paradigm of governance, it's actually going to be you know, for scale, a lot more automated, preferably zero touch, and it has to be cross lake. There cannot be assumed for one architecture, for one platform, for one technology, for one CSP provider. The one additional component that's recently gotten added into governance is actually cost management. You know, the cost of data is, is being compared very regularly to you know, the value that you're getting out of that data. So you might go and blow your entire budget in six months time and it's not going to look up, you know, good for you. So it has to be part and parcel of the way that you implement these processes. The, the whole FinOps thing, go ahead. Yeah, I want to add what Rohit is saying. The cost of moving data is very high. Right. When you take out the data and put it back, I think that's it's a big process. And I think if the data is that centralized place, probably there is, we see the value into it. But governance is so important within the whole process because now we are talking about all the metadata. How do we manage that? How do we put the proper governance, the security, the compliance, and all those pieces become so critical that an observability of that actually, it becomes so important. Okay, now you are looking at actually a centralized place, you are bringing those stuffs. Also how the multiple functions layering on the top of each other and how that governance needs to work on the top of it. Have you, have you standardized on one BI tool or you have multiple BI tools that, um, that you're feeding? We do have multiple, we do okay. have, yeah. So to, to your point about you don't want to move data into each of those BI tools, but again, back to the point about harmonizing the data, you want to have you know it's an overused term, but one single you know, version of the truth where billings means billings no matter what tool is, is, is being used. That's a really important point, right? So you know what we are doing at Excel Data is to go and identify your similar data assets. For example, you know you have thousands and just think of it. I give you a catalog, but here's the rub. You have 200 million columns in your catalog. So if somebody's looking for revenue, are they going to look at 10,000 rows before they decide to write the query on the right column? Yeah. How's that even going to work? Which is where observability comes in and says, okay, look, here's the logical categorization of your entire data lake, and not just one, but all your data lakes and data warehouses, and here is where you store different kinds of you know, information. Customers the same, but customers different for marketing and customers different for invoicing and financial purposes. Those entities, the core entities, the, the inviolable sources of truth, they get embellished with functional attributes, and then you have to still manage the core assets in an identical way. Because you know, the additional of marketing attributes doesn't change you know, Rohit as a customer. So he's the, still the same guy, whether it's for invoicing or for marketing. But it is important that we reduce the surface area. The reason that governance initiative, the reason that cataloging initiatives fail is because it's very static in nature. What you need is real-time active access to operational metadata. That's where we excel in. You know, we give you all the metadata in one place, which includes all the users, the SQLs, the notebooks, the cost characteristics and everything so that you can go and govern from there. So what about Snowflake Trail? Does that help you or is it, do you look at that and you say, eh, I don't need it? Well, we have a very strong partnership with Snowflake. We've integrated with every single thing that they've come up with, you know, including snow pipes and every right. single new piece of innovation that they bring in. We want to be you know, the best option for the partnership that we have with Snowflake and they should be able to use Excel data in the best format. So everything that they come up with for the next five years, we're going to be hitching our right to that. Excellent. Lean it in, okay. A great, a great note to end on. Roe and Praveen, thank you both so much for coming on theCUBE. A great so conversation. Yep. I'm Rebecca so Knight for Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.